defense system? Good evening, everyone. I now invite you to please stand and turn to the back of the church. <clears throat> My dear brothers and sisters, on this most sacred night in which our Lord Jesus Christ passed over from death to life, the church calls upon her sons and daughters scattered throughout the world to come together to watch and pray. If we keep the memorial of the Lord's Paschal Solemnity in this way, listening to his word and celebrating the mysteries, then we shall have the sure hope of sharing his triumph over death and living with him in God. And let us pray. O God, who through your Son bestowed upon the faithful the fire of your glory, sanctify this new fire, we pray, and grant that by these Paschal celebrations we may be so inflamed with heavenly desires that which that with minds made pure we may attain festivities of unending splendor through Christ our Lord amen, amen. Yesterday and today. The and the end. The Alpha and the Omega. All time belongs to Him. And all the ages. To him be glory and power through every age ever. Amen. By his holy and glorious wounds,
Thanks be to God. Really? <laughs> Exalt, let them exalt the hosts of heaven. Exalt, let angel ministers of God exalt. Let the trumpet of salvation sound aloud our mighty King's triumph. Be glad. Let earth be glad as glory floods her, ablaze with light from her eternal King. Let all corners of the earth be glad, knowing an end to gloom and darkness. Rejoice, let Mother Church also rejoice, Arrayed with the lightning of his glory, let this holy building shake with joy, filled with the mighty voices of the peoples. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. With ardent love of mind and heart. And with devoted service of our voice. To acclaim our God invisible the Almighty Father, and Jesus Christ, our Lord, His Son, His only begotten, who for our sake paid Adam's debt to the Eternal Father, and pouring out His own dear blood, 
wiped clean the record of our ancient sinfulness. These then are the feasts of Passover, in which is slain the Lamb, the one true Lamb, whose blood anoints the doorposts of believers. This is the night when once you led our forebears, Israel's children, from slavery in Egypt, and made them pass dry shod through the Red Sea. This is the night that with a pillar of fire banished the darkness of sin. This is the night that even now throughout the world sets Christian believers apart from worldly vices and from the gloom of sin, leading them to grace and joining them to His holy ones. This is the night when Christ broke the prison bars of death and rose victorious from the underworld. O oh, wonder of your humble care for us, O oh, love, O oh, charity beyond all telling, to ransom a slave you gave away your son. O oh, truly necessary sin of Adam, destroyed completely by the death of Christ. O oh, happy fault, that earned so great, so glorious a Redeemer. The sanctifying power of this night dispels wickedness, washes faults away, restores innocence to the fallen, and joy to mourners. O oh, truly blessed night, when things of heaven are wed to those of earth and divine to the human. On this your night of grace, O Holy Father, accept this candle, a solemn offering, the work of bees and of your servants' hands, an evening sacrifice of praise, this gift from your most holy church. Therefore, O Lord, we pray you that this candle, hallowed to the honor of your name, may persevere undimmed to overcome the darkness of this night. Receive it as a pleasing fragrance and let it mingle with the lights of heaven. May this flame be found still burning by the morning star, the one morning star who never sets, Christ your Son, who coming back from death's domain has shed his peaceful light on humanity, and lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> My dear brothers and sisters, now that we've begun our solemn vigil, let us listen with our hearts quieted to the word of God. Let us meditate on how God in times past saved his people and in these, the last days, has sent us his Son as our Redeemer. Let us pray that our God may complete this paschal work of salvation by the fullness of redemption. And now I invite you to please extinguish your candles and be seated. I take your mask off.
A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless wasteland, and darkness covered the abyss, while a mighty wind swept over the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. God saw how good the light was. God then separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. Thus evening came, and morning followed, the first day. Then God said, let there be a dome in the middle of the waters to separate one body of water from the other. And so it happened. God made the dome, and it separated the water above from the water below it. God called the dome the sky. Evening came, and morning followed, the second day. Then God said, let the water under the sky be gathered into a single basin so that the dry land may appear. And so it happened. The water under the sky was gathered into the basin and the dry land appeared. God called the dry land the earth and the basin of water he called the sea. God saw how good it was. Then God said, let the earth bring forth vegetation, every kind of plant that bears seed, and every, every kind of fruit tree on earth that bears fruit with its seed in it. And so it happened. The earth brought forth every kind of plant that bears seed, and every kind of fruit tree on earth that bears fruit with its seed in it. God saw how good it was. Evening came and morning followed the third day. Then God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate day from night. Let them mark the fixed times, the days and the years and serve as luminaries in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth. And so it happened. God made the two great lights, the greater one to govern the day and the lesser one to govern the night. And he made the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth, to govern the day and the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. God saw how good it was. Evening came and morning followed, the fourth day. Then God said, Let the water teem with an abundance of living creatures, and on the earth let birds fly beneath the dome of the sky. And so it happened. God created the great sea monsters and all kinds of swimming creatures with which the water teems and all kinds of winged birds. God saw how good it was, and God blessed them, saying, Be fertile, multiply, and fill the waters of the seas, and let the birds multiply on the earth. Evening came, and morning followed, the fifth day. Then God said, Let the earth bring forth all kinds of living creatures, cattle, creeping things, and wild animals of all kinds. And so it happened. God made all kinds of wild animals, all kinds of cattle, and all kinds of creeping things of the earth. God saw how good it is. Then God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and the cattle, and over all the wild animals, and all the creatures that crawl on the ground. God created man in his image. In the image of God, he created him. 
Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, saying, Be fertile and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and all the living things that move on the earth. God also said, See, I give you every seed-bearing plant all over the earth, and every tree that has seed-bearing fruit on it to be your food, and to all the animals of the land, and all the birds of the air, and all the living creatures that crawl on the ground, I give all the green plants for food. And so it happened. God looked at everything he had made, and he found it very good. Evening came, and morning followed, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth and all their array were completed, since on the seventh day God was finished with the work he had been doing. He rested on the seventh day from all the work he had undertaken. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
And let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who are wonderful in the ordering of all your works, may those you have redeemed understand that there exists nothing more marvelous than the world's creation in the beginning, except that at the end of the ages, Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward, and you, lift up your staff, and with hand outstretched over the sea, split the sea in two, that the Israelites may pass through it on dry land. But I will make the Egyptians so obstinate that they will go in after them. Then I will receive glory through Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots and charioteers. The Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I receive glory through Pharaoh and his chariots and charioteers. The angel of God, who had been leading Israel's camp, now moved and went around behind them. The column of cloud also, leaving the front, took up its place behind them so that it came between the camp of the Egyptians and that of Israel. But the cloud now became dark. And thus the night passed without the rival camps coming any closer together all night long. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord swept the sea with a strong east wind throughout the night, and so turned it into dry land. When the water was thus divided, the Israelites marched into the midst of the sea on dry land, with the water like a wall to their right and to their left. The Egyptians followed in pursuit. All Pharaoh's horses and chariots and charioteers went after them right into the midst of the sea. In the night watch just before dawn, the Lord cast through the column of the fiery cloud upon the Egyptian force a glance that threw it into a panic, and he so clogged their chariot wheels that they could hardly drive. With that, the Egyptians sounded the retreat before Israel because the Lord was fighting for them against the Egyptians. Then the Lord told Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea, that the water may flow back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and their charioteers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn the sea flowed back to its normal depth. The Egyptians were fleeing head on toward the sea when the Lord hurled them into its midst. As the water flowed back, it covered the chariots and the charioteers of Pharaoh's whole army, which had followed the Israelites into the sea. Not a single one of them escaped. But the Israelites had marched on dry land through the midst of the sea, with the water like a wall to their right and to their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel on that day from the power of the Egyptians. When Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the seashore and beheld the great power that the Lord had shown against the Egyptians, they feared the Lord and believed in him and in his servant, Moses. Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord, for he is gloriously triumphant. Horse and chariot he has cast into the sea. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Let us sing to the Lord, he has covered himself in glory. Let us sing to the Lord, he has covered himself 
in glory. I will sing to the Lord, for He is gloriously triumphant. Horse and chariot He has cast into the sea. My strength and my courage is the Lord, and He has been my Savior. He is my God, I praise Him. The God of my Father, I extol Him. Let us sing to the Lord, He has covered Himself in glory. The Lord is a warrior, Lord is His name. Pharaoh's chariots and army he hurled into the sea. The elite of his officers were submerged in the Red Sea. Let us sing to the Lord, he has covered himself in glory. The flood waters covered them. They sank into the depths like a stone. Your right hand, O Lord, magnificent in power. Your right hand, O Lord, has shattered the enemy. Let us sing to the Lord. He has covered himself in glory. You brought in the people you redeemed and planted them on the mountain of your inheritance, the place where you made your seat, O Lord, the sanctuary, Lord, which your hands established. The Lord shall reign forever and ever. Let us sing to the Lord. He has covered himself in glory. And let us pray. O God, whose ancient wonders remain undimmed in splendor, even in our day, for what you once bestowed on a single people, freeing them from Pharaoh's persecution by the power of your right hand, now you bring about as the salvation of the nations through the waters of rebirth. Grant, we pray, that the whole world may become children of Abraham and inherit the dignity of Israel's birthright. Through Christ our Lord, amen. amen. reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, all you who are thirsty, come to the water. You who have no money, come, receive grain and eat. Come without pain and without cost, drink wine and milk. Why spend your money for what is not bread, your wages for what fails to satisfy? Heed me and you shall eat well. You shall delight in rich fare. Come to me heedfully, listen, 
that you may have life. I will renew with you an everlasting covenant, the benefits assured to David as I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander of nations. So shall you summon a nation you knew not, and nations that you knew not shall run to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, who has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call him while he is near. Let the scoundrel forsake his way and the wicked man his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord for mercy, to our God who is generous in forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are my ways above your ways, and my thoughts above your thoughts. For just as the heavens, as just from the heavens, the rain and the snow come down, and do not return there, that they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the one who sows and bread to the one who eats, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. My word shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. <clears throat> You will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. You will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. God indeed is my Savior. I am confident and unafraid. My strength and my courage is the Lord, and he has been my Savior. With joy you will draw water at the fountain of salvation. You will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. Give thanks to the Lord, acclaim his name among the nations, make known his deeds. Proclaim how exalted is his name. You will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. Sing praise to the Lord for his glorious achievement. Let this be known throughout all the earth. Shout with exultation, O city of Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. You will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. And let us pray.
Almighty, ever-living God, soul, the hope of the world, who by the preaching of your prophets unveiled the mysteries of this present age, graciously increase the longing of your people, for only at the prompting of your grace do the faithful progress in any kind of virtue. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. Okay, we'll take this from you. Grace, I'm going to take this from you. I need you to follow me over there on my heart. Okay. And on earth, he's on God, who make this most sacred night radiant with the glory of the Lord's resurrection, stir up in your church a spirit of adoption so that, renewed in body and mind, we may render you undivided service. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, are you unaware that we who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? 
we were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in newness of life. For if we have grown into union with him through a death like his, we shall also be united with him in the resurrection. We know that our old self was crucified with him, so that our sinful body might be done away with, so that we, we might no longer be in slavery to sin, for a dead person has been absolved from sin. If then we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ, raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. As to his death, he died to sin once and for all. So as to his life, he lives for God. Consequently, you too must think of yourself as being dead to sin and living for God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Let the house of Israel say, his mercy endures forever. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The right hand of the Lord has struck with power. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory Glory to you, Lord. Lord. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome, brought spices so that they may go and anoint him. Very early, when the sun had risen, on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb. They were saying to, to one another, Who will roll back the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that stone had been rolled back. It was very large. On entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a white robe, and they were utterly amazed. He said to them, Do not be amazed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, the crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Behold, the place where they laid him. But go and tell his disciples and Peter, 
He's going before you to Galilee. <clears throat> there you will see him as he told you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Hallelujah, right? Yeah, there we go, yeah, and we get to celebrate it this year. That is a miracle, truly. We didn't get to celebrate this last year. It's the most special liturgy that we could have ever possibly celebrated. That so much has happened to us within a year's time. So much good and so much bad. But I don't want us concentrating on the bad tonight because... Tonight's all about the victory of Christ. Today's all about the victory where everybody thought they saw him nailed to the cross, they saw him dead. They saw him very lifeless, and yet three days later, what happens? They see him very much alive. Hallelujah! If you can't say hallelujah to that, that is an hallelujah story. He came back from life. And he came back from the most horrible form of crucifixion that anybody could have ever endured. The most shameful way to ever be put to death. And Jesus, yes, he needed to trust his father all the way. And when he needed to hear his father the most, he couldn't hear him because he was riddled in our sin so the part of the resurrection story has to be your and my sin. We don't like to talk about that. We like to keep everything good. But you and I need a Savior. And if we don't, well, guess what? Then I guess we're not sinners. Are we? Are we sinners? You know, it's almost like I feel like saying... I'm tired of sinning. I really am. I'm tired of being affected by people making wrong decisions. I'm tired of that every time I turn on the news, nobody's listening to each other. Tired, tired, tired. You feel that way? Okay. That's exactly, truly what we're feeling like. I'm just expressing it tonight. I was just so excited to be able to celebrate this night. You know, the last time, the very last time I was celebrant at the Easter Vigil, I almost burnt my church down. <laughs> what happened was I didn't know the deacons put, oil, uh, put um, alcohol in the sand. And so when I was ready to start, not only did they pour a whole thing in, I poured a whole thing on. And it was going real nice and everything that, and then all of a sudden, it was almost like an explosion. This grill that we had, it spit the fire so high up, the fires were flying across the ceiling in the vestibule of the lobby out there. I was like, oops, I think we have a little problem. But the, the um, grill caught on fire. And somebody, and of course we're praying the beginning, the end, and somebody says, open the door. I said, the beginning, don't open the door. It'll be the end. You know, don't open the door. We'll take care of that. And we had to close the grill top. And somebody was smart enough to go down where it wasn't burning and pull it out. We were saved. But somebody took a picture of that on the inside, took the video of that happening. I can't tell you how brilliant that orange was. Hence, never a pastor again. Oh, well. So, but the brilliancy of the orange, it reminded me, when I saw that video, it reminded me of the cleansing, the tongues of fire, the Holy Spirit coming in. Do you know this night we celebrate four major, major parts of our faith. The fire is first. The light of Christ comes into the world. The light of Christ does not 
ever leave the world. He is very much always here. How much wind do we create in our life to keep the light going or the light going out? We have to think about that. Again, think sinner. Think savior. Without sinning, we don't need saving. And when we get to this point that we don't need to be saved, that's when I do what I want to do, and that's what I'm tired of, right? Nobody should be ever, ever away from the mark of what God has in store for us. Dennis read the second, or the epistle. No, he didn't. You read the third reading of the Old Testament. That reading, if you remember, he's read to us what? God's ways are so high above our ways. You think you got it all figured out, right? You don't. Neither do I. I really don't. I still learn every day of my life, and I know that God calls you to learn every day of your life. And the more we are not listening, the more that we're trying to do our own thing, we get to experience, unfortunately, the chaos of not trusting. God's way is so much better than my way. So if somebody wants to argue that their way is better than God's way, I have a microphone if you want to come up, okay? And I'm serious about that because there is nobody's way that's better than God's way. Nobody. That's what is importantly made clear to us tonight. And then we move from the word into the beautiful part of baptism, bringing to life somebody who is walking in darkness. And not that any of us haven't walked in darkness, because we have, before we were born in the waters of baptism. But in the waters of baptism, those waters... You know, we think of refreshing springs, how good it would feel in the body. Yes, water does do that. But in this sacrament of baptism, the water represents the passage into life. Death is now passing into life. Death that we all experience because we're of human nature now goes down into the water and comes up as life. Life in Jesus Christ. It doesn't get any better than that. And because his ways are so high above our ways, because his thoughts are so much greater than our thoughts, the way you are lifted up by God is incredible. And you all are lifted up. And what are we called to do in our gift of baptism? We're called to lift up. To build up, not to kill somebody. And I don't mean physically. I mean by words or snide marks or whatever the case might be in our world. I want you to know enough is enough is enough. Love is the message of Christianity and our Catholicism. Love is when... I sacrifice everything for the good of another person. Everything. So, we come to the last part of the liturgy, and, and this is the true sacrifice that we need to remember every moment of our lives. Jesus gives us his body and his blood. He gives us his body and blood because he tells us we need to feed on him every day of our life. So I have the energy, I have the graces that I need to stop sinning in my own life. I have enough to worry about my own life. And as a priest, I worry about everybody else's life. But truly, that's my calling, and I love it. But there's nothing that touches me more than someone who comes into a confessional and is so 
burdened and ashamed and can't believe that they did this particular thing. And they're so sorry and they share what that darkness felt like. When that happens, I'm like, I see God. I see God. Because God's the one who led them to that moment. That is so sacred. And that's who our God is. He leads us to moments wherein we can share the depth of who we are. So what I'm sharing with you tonight, I'm tired of this. Let's start respecting people. Let's start listening to people. And I'll say it one more time. You can have all the rights you are given by God. And God gives you a lot of rights. And me too. But if I don't learn how to respect any of your rights, you don't have them anymore. You still have them from God. But how are you going to live through them if I make a decision that I'm not going to respect you? It's going to make it so hard. It's going to make it so, it's so easy for us to try to get away from who we are, who we're believing in, who we are trusting, okay? So I just jumped across this after, you know, right hip replacement surgery, and it's good, you know? So I'm ready to go. But I have to say, don't settle for this stuff. Stop talking over someone else. That's what we're being taught in a culture. Don't do that. Have the heart to sacrifice, to listen. It doesn't mean you have to follow, but it does mean you have to love your brother and your sister the way God loves us. And that's what we're all called to do. And if we don't get that point, we have to go back to our basics all over again. Because the greatest commandment, love God with everything you have, your heart, your mind, your soul, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. Start loving yourself. And as you love yourself, you're going to make a great lover of neighbor. And that's how our world's going to change. And you have such an integral part of doing that because you're not dead anymore. You're alive. Are you alive? Yes. Uh, that was really lame. Are you really alive? Yes. Okay. Show people that you're alive in God. That's a resurrection, alleluia, if I ever heard one. God bless you. And you can come wake me up too. You know, I have problems getting up in the morning. But you can raise me up with all those resurrection and the alleluias because that's what we are about. And if we're not about that, we got a lot of thinking to do when God tells us his way is so much greater than ours. Can't we just say one day, okay, God, lift my mind, my soul, my entire being up to you so that I can love myself the way you want me to love myself, regardless of what I've been through in life, so that I can be the heart that loves my brother and sister. Amen? Amen. That's what the resurrection story is all about. Happy Easter, everyone, and get up and just love people. And remember that God is lifting you higher and higher every time. Every time you show this kind of love to another person, this kind of love is the kind of love that makes you grow. So if you have to start doing this, I'll know what you're doing, all right? But make sure you let other people know. I don't want to have to come and visit you in other places, okay? Love is the key to all this stuff. Amen. Happy Easter, everybody. <clears throat>
Reverend Father, I now present to you the elect, elect of God. When I call your name, please come forward with your sponsor. Christian Vintasinku. Almighty, ever-living God, be present by the mysteries of your great love and send forth the spirit of adoption to create the new peoples brought to birth for you in the font of baptism so that what is to be carried out by our humble service may be brought to fulfillment by your mighty power through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
This time we're going to bless the water that will be used. It's our Easter water. It's the water which Christian will be baptized. O oh God, who by invisible power accomplish a wondrous effect through sacramental signs and in who many ways have prepared water, your creation, to show forth the grace of baptism. O oh God, whose spirit in the first moments of the world's creation hovered over by the waters so that the very substance of water would even then take to itself the power to sanctify. O oh God, who by the outpouring of the flood foreshadowed regeneration so that from the mystery of one and the same element of water would come and end into vice and beginning of all virtue. A God, O oh God, who caused the children of Abraham to pass dry shod through the Red Sea so that the chosen people set free from slavery to Pharaoh could prefigure the people to be baptized. O oh God, whose son baptized by John in the waters of the Jordan, was anointed with the Holy Spirit. And he's, as he hung upon the cross, he gave forth water from his side along with his blood. And after his resurrection, he's commanded his disciples, go forth, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Look now, we pray, upon the face of your church and graciously unseal for her the fountain of baptism. May this water receive the Holy Spirit, the grace of your only begotten Son, so that human nature created in your image and washed clean through the sacrament of baptism from all the squalor of the life of the world may be found worthy to rise to life of newborn children through water and the Holy Spirit. And Lord, may the power of the Holy Spirit, let, we pray, come down through your Son into the fullness of the font, so that all who have been buried with Christ by baptism into death may rise again to life with him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Springs of water bless the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all Christian, you have called your God to listen to you, and he's called you to this cleansing water, that they may share in the faith of your church and have eternal life. By the mystery of this consecrated water, lead them to a new and spiritual birth. And so I ask you, Christian. Do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of the children of God? Do you renounce the lure of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you? Do you renounce Satan, the author and prince of, Pete, of sin? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death, and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting? 
And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sin, keep us by his grace. In Christ Jesus, our Lord, for eternal life. Amen. I now invite Christian and his sponsor to come forward for the baptism. Okay, Christian. I'm going to have you put your head over here just for it. Christian Matthew, I baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This time, Christian is putting on the white garment that represents the dignity of person that he truly is. He doesn't give dignity to himself. Who gave it to him? God. Everyone baptized in this church, who gives you your dignity? God. Don't ever forget that. No one gives it to you. Therefore, no one, without your permission, can never take it from you. Christian, Matthew, you have become a new creation. You've clothed yourself in Christ. Receive this baptismal garment and bring it unstained to the judgment seat of our Lord Jesus Christ so that you may have everlasting life. Amen. I'm going to ask the sponsor to come forward now to take a light from the Paschal candle. And return to the Kennedy. Christian Matthew, you have been enlightened by Christ. Walk always as a child of the light. And keep the flame of faith alive in your heart. When the Lord comes, may you go out to meet him and with all the saints in his heavenly kingdom. Amen. I'm going to ask you to turn around so we can recognize our new brother in Jesus Christ. Come by Christian to return to his pew. You can keep your candle lit because the rest of us will now be renewing our baptismal promises through the light that we hold to remind us we are people of the light of Christ. <clears throat> My 
I invite you to stand because it'll be easier for you to light the candle as well. <clears throat> Dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal Mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may rise with him to newness of life. Now that we completed our Lenten observance, let us renew the promises we made in baptism when we rejected Satan and his works and promised to serve God faithfully in his holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of God's children? I do. Do you renounce the lure of evil and refuse to be mastered by sin? I do. Do you renounce Satan, the father of sin and the prince of darkness? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death, and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Amen. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? Amen. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus, our Lord, for eternal life. Amen.
now invite you to please extinguish your candles and please be seated. Reverend Father, I present to you those who will enter the faith community to make their profession of faith. Candidate, when I call your name, please come up with your sponsor, Julia Holleran. Julia, of your own free will, you've asked to be received into the fullness and communion of the Catholic Church. You have made your decision after careful thought under the guidance of the Holy Spirit and in the presence of this community to profess the Catholic faith. In this faith, you will be one with us for the first time at our Lord's Eucharistic table of the sign of the church's unity. And so, Julia, I ask you, do you believe in what we have professed with you? Julia, the Lord receives you into the Catholic Church. His loving kindness has led you here so that in the unity of the Holy Spirit, you may have full communion with us in the faith and that you have professed in the presence of your family, the family of your church community. Amen. Let's give Julia a round of applause. Reverend Father, I now present to you the candidates for confirmation. Candidates, when I call your name, please come forward with your sponsors. Christian Vintasinku and Julia Holler. My dear candidates for confirmation, by your baptism, you have been born again into Christ, and you have become members of Christ and of his priestly people. Now you are to share in the outpouring of the Holy Spirit among us, the Spirit sent by the Lord upon his apostles at Pentecost, and given by them and their successors to the baptized. The promised strength of the Holy Spirit, which you are about to receive, will make you more like Christ and help you to be witnesses to his suffering, his death and resurrection. It will strengthen you to be active members of the church and to build up the body of Christ in faith and love. And so, my dear friends, we now pray to God, our Father, that he will pour out the Holy Spirit on these candidates for confirmation to strengthen them with his gifts and anoint them to be more like Christ, the Son of God. I now invite you to stand as we now pray over our brother and sister. All-powerful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, by water and the Holy Spirit, you freed your sons and daughters from sin and gave them a new life. Send your Holy Spirit upon them to be their helper and guide. Give them the strength of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of right judgment and courage, the spirit of knowledge and reverence, 
Fill them with the spirit of wonder and awe in your presence. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. brothers and sisters in Christ, we now have a new brother and sister in Christ. I'd like you to turn around. Again, let us welcome you and let you feel the presence of our love. Okay. I'd like you to return to your seats at this time. We come together in the trust that our living Father's care for us is never-ending. For the Holy Father and all the bishops and clergy, may God provide for their every need as they preach the gospel of salvation to all the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For world leaders, may they be granted the wisdom to lead peacefully and work cooperatively. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. To those who feel broken by difficult circumstances, may they experience the healing and wholeness by turning to God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those coming into the Catholic Church tonight, may they find themselves welcomed and at home at last. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved dead, may they be welcomed into the glory of heaven with the angels and the saints. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for our own special intentions, which we hold in our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, especially this year, we give you so much thanks for your unconditional love for us and your faithfulness to your promises, to your promise throughout history. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen.
back. Our offertory hymn is Jesus Christ is Risen Today. My sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept sacrifice at your head for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, we ask, O Lord, the prayers of your people with the sacrificial offerings that what has begun in the Paschal Mysteries may, by the working of your power, bring us to the healing of eternity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this night, in this time, above all, 
to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, he's restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers, with the angelic host, sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Do therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts that we have presented these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace and guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world. Together with your servant, our Pope Francis, our Bishop Dennis, and all those holding to the truth and on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here this evening whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, for they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and praying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred night of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh, and in communion with those, mem those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, your blessed saints Joseph, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all the saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help through Christ our Lord. Amen. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole human family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation, and count it among the flock of those you have chosen. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our sacrifice, that of your holy family, which we make to you, also for those to whom you have been pleased to give the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, draw, granting them forgiveness of all their sins, order our days in your presence, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation 
and count it among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect, that make it spiritual and acceptable, that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, Jesus took bread in his holy and venerable hands. And with his eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, he broke the bread, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing. He gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith when we eat this bread and drink this cup we proclaim your death O Lord until you come Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants, and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, holy God, a command that these gifts be borne by the hand of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty so that all of us who through the participation at this altar receive the most body and blood the most holy body and blood of your Son, and may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants, whom have gone before us marked with the sign of faith, and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To also 
your servants, our brothers and sisters, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon, through whom you continue to make all these things good, O Lord. You sanctify them, you fill them with life, you bless them, and you bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At our Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, I would be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For, For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with all of you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. 
Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ save us for eternal life. Amen. Julie and Mark, you're about to receive Jesus Christ for the first time in Holy Communion. This is the culmination of what we believe as Catholic Christians. We believe in the true presence, body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ. And as we receive this, remember the first story Dot told at the beginning of this liturgy, the whole creation story. God was with us, but we messed up, and Jesus comes not to be with us, but to be in us. So much more beauty is in that. So for the rest of your life, you too, and the, all of us who receive Jesus in the Eucharist, we have him right here, not any further than a breath or a prayer away. So we welcome you to the table of our Lord. I'm going to ask Julia to come up first, her family, and then Christian, and then the rest of us can receive. Thank you. Amen. Amen.
was, I was going to sing a little bit. Eucharistic prayer and final blessing. On behalf of Father Maz, he got out of it again. How about that? I don't know if he's still watching because he's in bed pretty early, so he might have it on his recorder. He may be watching. But I just want to thank Father Maz. I wanted him to be able to celebrate with us because we didn't do it again. Again, we didn't do it last year, and, and uh, who knows when we'll get to do it all together again. So I appreciate time, I appreciate everything, and I especially want to thank Father Maz. He's the best, and I really, truly mean it, and may he be blessed. I also want to thank everyone who's done such a beautiful job this week. There's so many people to thank, and I'm going to try to get them all. The choir has been in and out all week. Thank you, John. Thank you, choir. I didn't quite get the mask, but I got them now. So, but I, I truly want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. You added so much to all the celebrations. And the deacons, Deacon Mike, Deacon George, Deacon John, and Deacon Jim, who also is having a spring trouble of his back. Oh, why didn't I think of that? <laughs> So anyway, for those four guys, I love them so much, and they are so helpful. 
They'll bend over backwards for everyone and anyone. And I want to thank them in a special way. Thank you, gentlemen, very much. And that would include uh, Deacon Joe Janoka and Deacon Charlie Dillon, because we still have them hanging out with us every once in a while. So they're very life-giving, and I really appreciate them as well. Um, our altar servers, what a great job. We haven't had them for a while, so we haven't missed a beat. This was Grace's first time holding the book. You did a great job. You'll never have to hold the book as many times as you did tonight, Grace. And for the two of you, Aiden and George, thank you very much for everything. These three kids have a lot of spirit in them, and they share their joy, and I like that. Keep up the good work, gentlemen. And... Carrie is unbelievable on all that she does to live stream. I can't tell you, Carrie, and all your team who have done this, how many wonderful blessings they receive at home. And without that capability, a lot of people would be in the dark. They can't tell you, and I can't share with you, how grateful they truly are. Carrie, you're amazing, and we love you, and thank you for doing that. <clears throat> and we'll thank Phil just because he hangs around with her, you know. So. <laughs> and John Paul, what a cute kid! Oh my goodness! So we just we just thank God for the many talents. I want to thank all the RCIA team that worked so hard once again this year. For those who come into the church, it's truly our pleasure. It's our, it's our heart. It's our gift of thanksgiving to God to try to share the faith. Just because we finish formally doesn't mean that we're finished informally. And please come. There's a lot of wonderful people in our parish. And I hope you get to experience them just as much as I am. And if you're really good on names, stand next to me because I need your help. Okay, I am never good on names. And I think that's about it. The ushers, uh, they've been doing double time and triple time. And they're not only here all weekends, but because of COVID, they put in the extra time, the extra hours to be with us for funerals and weddings. And I can't thank them enough. They have allowed us to be safe. And you guys are terrific. Thank you for all the work that you do. So, And the usherette. I see you back there, Kathy. You know, we have women that are ushers too. So anybody want to usher, feel free. You know, but I mostly want to thank God for all of you. It's been a tough year, but it's also been a year that's really clear to me that you know, love conquers all things. Love never fails. It will serve you and me for the rest of our lives, no matter what happens. Because God is a victor of love. Amen? Amen. Remember that always, okay? That is our victory. God who loves us, and God willing, we all accept the challenge to love him with all that we are. Okay, I don't think Father Maz ever went this long on an Easter Vigil Mass, so I think we'll bring, oh, Phil. Okay, I think we'll bring it to an end, but I'm just so grateful. Thank you, everybody. Great. <clears throat>
May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and as in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. Amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten Son endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal victim, the Paschal feast, Come always with Christ's help and exalting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Hang in there. We got that special little song that I'm going to try again. Go forth the masses and the Alleluia. Alleluia. Ten years it took. Yeah. All right, now you respond. To God, Alleluia. Alleluia. Yeah, very good people. Go ahead. Have a great week. God bless you. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And be thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast in hell Satan and all the evil spirit who prowl about the world seeking a ruin of souls. Amen. Our recessional is Alleluia number one.